Coming up on today's edition of the Bulls Report, should the Chicago Bulls be targeting center Zach Eady in the 2024 NBA Draft? I'll give you guys my full thoughts on the Purdue Center here just around the corner, but I want to get you guys involved here early on today's show. Let your thoughts be known down in the comments section. Will Zach Eady be good in the NBA? It's simple. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. If you guys want to go that extra mile, give me a little film breakdown of your own on the Purdue Center. What's going on, guys? Welcome into the Bulls Report. My name is Patrick Seatman, and the Chicago Bulls need to draft Zach Eady in the 2024 NBA Draft. I'm going to be giving you guys my full breakdown and more on today's show as why I am falling in love with the Purdue Center, and I think his game will translate a whole lot better than most of the common NBA fans think. But let's actually go back. Uh, Zach Eady versus Tennessee in the Elite Eight matchup was an absolute force to be reckoned with. I mean, he had 40 points and 16 rebounds, the first player in college basketball history to do so in an Elite Eight matchup. He was 13 of 21 up from the floor, and he can shoot the free throw a lot better than people think, obviously standing in at 7 foot 4 uh, he was 14-22 to 22 from the line. He just absolutely dominated that game. By far the best player on the court. And he's been by far the best player in this March Madness tournament in 2024. And just a quick little scouting report from when I've been going back and watching all of Zach Eady's tape from this last season. The thing I love the most about him is he makes his moves quick. He'll get the ball in the post right away, turn the either shoulder. He prefers turn into his left, and he'll just put a jump hook up right away. He just gets it at the rim pretty, pretty fast. And he's got elite touch went around the rim as well. And you know, listen, guys, size matters. Um, I, you know, kind of a joke, but, you know, I think we're seeing in the NBA, like, teams are getting bigger, and you start looking at the past NBA champs, like, you know, the Bucks were a big team. The Nuggets last year were a very big ball club. Like, besides the Golden State Warriors, who were kind of an anomaly, and they had the best point guard of all time, in my opinion, in Steph Curry, and they weren't normally a big team. It's normally big physical teams who play that brand of basketball end up winning. And if you would add Zach Eady to your roster – I mean, he is just, I mean, he's seven foot four. He looks huge on the court. His wingspan's massive. So just obviously, you know, size matters in the NBA, and he, you know, is that. But also this, he's got great touch around the rim. Like, whether it's that little push shot um, coming off a of pick and roll, him diving to the rack, or it's him getting the either shoulder and getting to his hook shot, like, he has tremendous touch. He puts actually elite backspin on the basketball on hook shots, which obviously just allows the ball to more likely than not go in the rim, you know, obviously when you put it up there. So he's got great touch, and he does have an unstoppable move. Um, his jump hook, like, he gets the ball in the post, he's quickly turning to either shoulder, he puts it up, and he's shooting it at an incredibly high rate. That's why Zach Eady, like, all these reasons why I just think, like, yes, the NBA game is different, but when you have unstoppable moves and you have great touch and you go quickly in the post, like, there is still that – kind of brand of basketball in the NBA, and I think Edie could do a great job of translating that game. And, you know, my last point, you know, whether it's in life or, you know, basketball, football, hockey, whatever it may be, I think great, greatness translates. And, you know, he's been great at Purdue. Over the last three seasons, he's probably going to win back-to-back -back National Player of the Years. And, you know, I just think, like, what he's made of and everything, like, I think he's going to figure it out at the next level. I mean, the dude is by far the best player in college hoops right now. I think, you know, I think that will translate. I think just overall his mentality will obviously help him get there. And this is what he said after the uh, win versus Tennessee. And he was passionate. He was screaming in the mic. He actually scared the reporter a little bit when he said this. But he said they thought they knew what we had in our heart. I pro or I'll promise you they didn't. We're effing winners. This is what we do. And I love his mentality. Anytime I've heard him speak at the podium or a post-game reaction, like, you can feel the intensity and just the love for the game he has. And when I'm evaluating prospects, like for the NBA and everything, like you can look at, you know, the tape. Obviously that matters, number one. But like, who are they as a person? Because, you know, they're going to go through tough times in the NBA. Just like how Edie went through tough times in college hoops, being a first-round exit last season. He came back better than ever, and I think no matter what, like whatever he goes through in the NBA, he'll be able to figure it out. And I kind of hinted this at, uh, or hinted at this at the beginning of today's show. The NBA is getting bigger. Like these guys are coming out now where they're six foot 11, uh, six foot 11 wings, you know, these six foot five guards, like overall, just the game is getting bigger. And I think, you know, people are looking at the Denver Nuggets last year of them running Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr. And Nikola Jokic, you know, that's a big ball club. And if we take a look at two of the better players in the NBA right now, both in the rookie season, they're both seven foot two. Chet Holmgren 
and then Victor Wembanyama at seven foot four. Like I really do believe like these teams are just you know starting to get these guys who are you know seven foot plus but can also do multiple things you know at the next level. And yes, Edie does not have the handle or like the skill as these two guys, but you know I think he can match up well with them. I think he moves a lot better than people think or than people give him credit for, and it could be a tough matchup for these two. And overall, he's been doing this the entire season. The thing I love the most about this stat we're showing is his 71% free throw percentage. You know, he's going to get fouled a lot just because of his size, and him, you know, having the ability to knock it down from the free throw line is a big reason why he's averaging 25 points a game, 12 rebounds. I mean, the dude shooting 62% from the field, which is just incredible, and he does have that rim protection ability, 2.2 blocks per game. I mean, you're 7'4", with a seven foot six wingspan, you're gonna just naturally be able, you know, to protect the rim. And you know, a little fun fact here or a fun stat: Edie has the highest points per touch in college basketball history. So every time the ball gets in Zach Edie's hand on the little block, that move, as the unstoppable move I was hinting at at the beginning of today's show, is the best move in college basketball history. And it gets me to this: the Boban comp, in my opinion, is just flat out lazy. I think people just look at oh, two seven foot four guys who maybe can't, you know, move their feet too, too well. You know, I think they just connected the two and just said, oh, Boban didn't work out. Well, that means Zach Eady isn't going to work out. Was Boban ever the back-to-back -back national player of the year? Was he ever the driving force on back-to-back -back, uh, Purdue basketball teams who were the number one seed? No. So I'll kick it to you guys right now. Who do you want the Bulls to draft? It could not be Zach, or if it's not Zach Eady, give me a name down in the comment section. Curious to see what you guys have to say, and maybe I'll talk about him on a future show. So a big reason why I want the Bulls to draft Zach Eady is because the Nikola Vucevic experiment here in Chicago just needs to come to an end after another brutal game against the Atlanta Hawks uh, last night. That's coming up in just a second. But first, I want to give a big-time shout-out to today's sponsor, and that is Factor. If you guys head to factormeals.com slash BullsChat50 and use promo code BullsChat50, we will hook you guys up with 50% off. What is Factor Meals? It is two-minute meals that helps you fuel up fast, and they are restaurant-quality that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. Pancakes, smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. It's no prep, no mess, no mess meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed, and it's flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week, Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time. Factor is the perfect solution. If you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required, sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So head to factormeals.com slash bullschat50 and use code bullschat50, and we'll hook you guys up with 50% off. That's code BullsChat50 at factormeals.com slash BullsChat50 to get 50% off. Link in the comment section and description of today's show. Let's talk about it. Nikola Vucevic, probably the most overrated player in Chicago Bulls history. He just needs to go because after another disappointing game last night, I just keep on getting back to this thought where what the hell were the Bulls thinking giving this dude another contract this offseason? Well, let's just look at his stats because I want to show you guys the three-point percentage right away. He's shooting 28.6% from downtown. I know you're going to be saying, oh, well, he doesn't take that many threes, yada, yada, yada. Well, he does. I mean, the dude, every single time he sets a screen, it feels like now he is just hunting the three-point shot, and it is a terrible shot because I promise you, when other NBA defenses are scouting the Chicago Bulls, every time that they get a Nikola Vucevic three, they are clapping their hands or popping champagne on the bench because it's a great defensive possession. But, hey, you may be saying, Oh, he's averaging 17.8 points per game, 10.6 rebounds, 48% of the field. That's pretty damn solid. I'll say this. His stats are absolutely meaningless. His stats, it is the biggest empty calorie player in the NBA. And, you know, I just think naturally as centers in the league, like they run so much pick and rolls. Like if you play 30 plus minutes a night, I feel like any center, like even like the four string center for the Knicks, we've seen him step in Jericho Sims and he can go have a 20 and 20 game. His stats are meaningless, and it also gets me to this. He is the worst defender in the NBA. Like, obviously, maybe the stats might not show it, but I truly believe it. When I'm watching his game, he is just terrible on that side of the floor. He can't protect the rim, hence why he's averaging .8 blocks a game as a center playing 34 minutes. He has no rim protection ability, and when he is switched on the guards, it is barbecue chicken every single damn time 
a guard gets switched on to him. And let's take a look at his stats last night for the Hawks because, hey, clap it up for Vooch here. In 31 minutes, he had five points, 14 rebounds, and he was two of seven from the field. This is your starting center, ladies and gentlemen. In 31 minutes, he had five points, 14 boards, and was two of seven from the field. He was terrible on offense, and he was awful on defense, and just overall, it just needs to end. I would be fine with the Bulls freaking cutting him this offseason because the experiment of Vooch, it needs to be over. He is a terrible basketball player. He is not a winning basketball player. And I have this saying, are you a confetti guy? Can you see Nikola Vucevic holding up an NBA trophy with confetti raining down on him? He might be the last player on that list in the entire NBA, in my opinion. But that's just what I think. But I want you guys to you know, give Nikola Vucevic a 2K rating right now because I believe he is at, let me actually look this up, what he is at right now according to 2K, 2K because I guarantee you it is incredibly overrated. But I want you guys to scale it for me down below in the comment section, 1 through, 90, 1 through 99. So he's, a, he's an 82 overall. That's a joke. I'd probably put him at about like a 73 or 74. But, hey, maybe you guys disagree with me. Let me know down below. Just want to say thank you guys so much for watching today's show. Want to talk about Zach Eady and then obviously, you know, Nikola Vucevic on the back end because the Bulls, they need an upgrade at that center position. And I'm just overall sick and tired of watching Vuce play basketball. But thank you guys so much for watching today's show. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Bulls Report. See you all next time. Go Bulls.